Two weeks ago, my son Jason got an unusual fishing lesson from Craig Scoff from Hazlitt, Michigan, an American pioneer in fishing techniques from Europe. You're rigged up with what looks like a conventional fishing rod, mm-hmm. one like we used up in Canada. Right, Jace? Right. But what is this nonsense on here? Okay. <laughs> What this really makes a difference is, is the sensitivity. All right, this isn't a very small line. This is a rig I would use to teach kids, let's say, in America, because it's, it's rigged with about a six or four pound line. Mm-hmm. And the shot and the hook, this is a number 14 hook. Now hold it, this isn't six, is it? This, well, this is four down here, and this is a six mm-hmm. up here. Mm-hmm. What I did is I tied, with the surgeon's knot, I tied on a tippet that was, that's now four pound. So it, it makes it a little bit easier if you have real sensitive fish. What do you notice about this, Jace? It's different. Yes, very different. Very different. The hook size. I don't even, I mean, the size of that hook is a, is this a 12 or 14? All right, that's or? a 14. We'll use um, hooks all the way down to size 24. This is a 24 right here. A 24. Get a load of this, Jason. This is going to knock you out. We've never even used hooks this small. Ratman paper. See, so these, I mean, this is, that's about an average hook over in Europe, right there. How in the world would you tie this on your line? Well, uh, I mean, how could you see and thread it through? It's very, you gotta, gotta be real careful when you're I doing guess. it. But uh, when you're using hook like this, it helps because when you drop a larva in the water, or whatever bait you're using, it sinks at such a rate, such a slow rate, that if you use a real heavy bait hook, what happens is it speeds up the sinking rate. Hmm. And if it's a real sensitive fish, like a big bluegill is, then it'll actually, the, actually, if it sinks too fast, it'll actually hurt your fishing ability rather than help it. Hmm. L- look at the, well, I'd call this a, a sinker, a split shot. Is that what they're called? Split shot, yeah. Split shot. The size of that, I don't know how much that must weigh, but not much. Not much at all. And then up a little higher is a, is a larger one. Yeah. And then uh, up, and then up, the up to the larger ones. What we try to do, we try to create something called a parabolic curve when we do this. And what that is, is you spread the shot out so that the closer it gets to the hook, the smaller it gets. Mm-hmm. Okay. We could take these two shots, all right? and get a, a shot bigger that equals the same thing. And it's gonna take the float down to the same point, which we want it to be right about to the, mm-hmm. where the red mark starts. So that gives you the most sensitivity. But if you take a large shot that's the same weight as those two, it's gonna make your larva sink that much faster. Okay, but you're talking about what we do here in America. A bobber up top, yep. a big split shot mm-hmm. above the hook, and then when you throw it in the water, it sinks right straight down. Well, the down. problem you have with that is if you have one of those large bobbers, there's so much surface tension that has to break for that fish to move it mm-hmm. that it, it's, impo- it's impossible for you to see that initial take. When you have a float like this, that you get set right down to the, like, you know, the tip like mm-hmm. that, or let's say if you had one of these, this is a cane-tipped peacock quill, this small tip like that. If so you, these, these are peacock quills? Those are peacock quills. So how much would you say that weighs, Jace? Not very much. I mean, virtually <laughs> maybe a, maybe a twentieth of what an American bobber would weigh, and Just and that's and that's a large that's a large European float right there. And you have other floats here. For yeah, for different conditions. These are for real distance casting right here. These are bodied wagglers. This is this is some European style line here, but the line itself has a lot of oh, stretch yeah. to it. So when you're Let's see if I can pull it like that. See if you can see this, Chase. See the stretch in that? So if you do get a big fish that takes oh, it, yeah. you, you, you can't really tell the difference between a big fish and a small fish taking it it's because it, you know, it's so light, generally. But let's say they do take it. Then when you set the hook, that stretch in the line will take the shock out when the fish turns and mm-hmm. heads down, depending on what type of fish it is. So you have the stretch in the line, you have very light line. Full very light line, yeah. I'm sure you use less than that in the tournament. Now these split shot, I mean, they are the, the smallest split shot. I've ever seen. Okay, that, that's actually quite large for Europe. Uh, one of the things that you have when you're in Europe is a very, very small shot because it, when you're in Europe, the fish are so sensitive. Uh, in Ireland, where we were at, they, they say that the average fish has been caught maybe four to five times. And when you've got fish that are that sensitive to what's going on, they know when you're feeding them that, that there's a fisherman present, but it's just a matter of fooling them, making them think that your larva is as natural as possible. Yeah, all this talk about Larva, maggies, you call them maggots, no. maggots, maggots. This is gonna disgust everybody in America. Mag- what the funny Nobody th- uses maggots. The funny thing about maggots country. are they're actually the cleanest bait you can get, because what maggots do is they release an ammonia. 
that cleans the food that they're eating. So actually, they're cleaner than worms would be. There they are, Jace. Do they look like maggots? No. <laughs> they don't. This is kind of festive. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of different colors of them. They color them by um, feeding them on chicken meat that's injected with a dye. And that stains their inside and turns them different colors. Hmm. Now these, these maggies, as they're affectionately called in mm -hmm. England, are the main type of bait you use in the tournament fishing? The different European? sizes, different colors, yeah. Uh, there's, you know, some of the smaller worms are used also, but these are about the best bait that I've found. Yeah, we've done tapes on night crawlers, big night crawlers, and they can hardly choke them down, yeah. and they sometimes spit them out. Yeah, and you lose it a lot because they take it bit by bit. Mm -hmm. But with these, with a small hook, they suck it in so soon, and if you have a sensitive float, you see that so soon that you always get a hook in the side of the mouth. It's very rarely you get one that's, you know, that swallows it, maybe if you're not paying attention to your float, maybe one out of a hundred fish. Okay, you can see the pointy end and the flat end. Mm -hmm. All right, so the, th what you... the thing about the flat end here is that you've got a little lip of skin off to one side mm -hmm. here. Now, if you take the hook and run it right through that lip of skin, just like that, huh. you can usually get a good hookup. That wasn't a very good hookup. See how mm -hmm. he bursts? Mm -hmm. All right, this is a large hook. This isn't a very good hook for what we're using here. Uh, we should be using uh, for about a 14, actually something like a small worm. If I was going to use a lot of maggots, I'd, I might even go down to an 18, because I'll burst a few of them. You mm -hmm. can use this hook, but you're going to burst more bait and you'll use more bait, because it's e much easier for them to take them off your hook. And now the proof. A small sunfish takes the larva oh. on a tiny oh. hook, one of nearly 100 we caught in an hour and a half, including a 12-inch crappie, a bullhead, a big bluegill, and a three-pound bass. Tune in next week and learn how to slay those summer panfish European style. Thank you.